Very recently, the Federal Regulatory Authority of Ontario, which is essentially the governing body that regulates insurance companies, did a massive crackdown on multiple different multi-level marketing insurance companies, including Experior Financial, World Financial Group, and the biggest offender of all, Great Way Financial. And the biggest thing that they found was that universal life insurance was being incorrectly sold to a multitude of clients. And in today's video, I'm going to answer the question, is universal life insurance just a giant scam and it's not good for anyone and should anyone buy it by the end of this video you'll know if it's the right product for you or not what is up guys for those of you who are new to the channel my name is philip setter i'm the founder and ceo of affinity life where we've helped hundreds of canadians find the right life insurance coverage at the right price all from the comfort of their own home if that sounds interesting i'll put a link in the description below and you can check it out but without further ado let's get right into the video okay so i guess let's just start with permanent life insurance in general and kind of get a good idea because you need to when considering whether or not universal life insurance is right for you need to consider the different types of permanent life insurance and you need to also consider the context in which someone is suggesting permanent life insurance to you so here in Canada we have two main types we have whole life insurance and we have universal life insurance so now whole life insurance is you know in a nutshell easy to understand the more expensive but more guaranteed options so essentially with whole life insurance you're buying the guarantees you're paying a little bit more but you're buying the guarantees guaranteed cash surrender value as well as guaranteed payment periods and so what i mean by that is you can pick a payment term whether that be 10 years 15 years or 20 years you say hey i just want to pay for this set amount of time let me know how much i need to pay but after that i'm done it's paid off i never need to worry about paying it again universal life insurance on the other hand is a little bit more complicated there's multiple different components to it and they're unbundled meaning you can fluctuate this one up really high and you can fluctuate this one lower or this one higher with that comes a lot more flexibility there's a lot more things you can do with it however it also comes less guarantees there's more things that can go wrong and there's more things that you need to consider now you might be wondering well why even buy permanent life insurance in the first place and that's really what I want to talk about here for a couple minutes is here's the thing when determining whether or not you should get whole life or you universal life, you need to consider in what context are you buying it for, okay? So permanent life insurance is often sold for two main reasons. And one of them, I strongly disagree with for a lot of people. However, it can be a good idea for some people. Now, the first reason you would buy permanent life insurance is for exactly that. You want some type of life insurance to last until the very end. You want to help with estate planning. Maybe you'll have some taxes that are due upon death. Maybe you have, you know, a vacation home, maybe you own some shares in a company, maybe you have a larger estate and you know there's going to be some taxes upon death. So you say, you know what? I want some liquidity upon death. I want to have something there to help pay for these taxes when I die so my family doesn't have this massive tax bill and we don't have to sell the cottage and I can pass it down, you know, to the next generation and they can pass it down to the next generation. The other thing you would use permanent life insurance for, again, in that context of estate planning, is just passing something down to the next generation. You say, you know what? I've worked hard my entire life. I have a bunch of money that I've saved up in a bunch of investments that I just don't personally need for my retirement. Maybe I should get some type of permanent life insurance because it's a very efficient way to transfer your assets to the next generation. That's really, you know, one of the main purposes of permanent life insurance is passing that down to the next generation. Another common way that it could be used, again, in that context of estate planning is if you had some type of disabled child, if you had disabled children or child and you needed to have coverage that is lifelong, right? You know that you're going to be financially dependent with upon that child or that child's going to be financially dependent upon you, pardon me, until they pass away. And so you need the life insurance today. You'll need it in 10 years. You'll need it in 50 years and you'll need it when you eventually die. Getting permanent life insurance to cover off that is very important. Now, the second main way that people buy permanent life insurance, or I should actually say that advisors sell permanent life insurance, is this quote unquote selling it as an investment. And this is where it gets a little bit more complicated because they try and, and I mean, they do a fairly decent job of masking these two things together. They say, well, you need life insurance today because you have a family and you might need some, you know, for estate planning purposes. And you obviously need to get some investments 
started for your retirement. So why don't we just use life insurance to cover up all these different things? And, you know, you can put it into this big universal life insurance policy or this big whole life insurance policy, and this will cover it off. Here's the thing is it does kind of a poor job at all of those. It doesn't really do any of them incredibly well. But let's specifically talk about the investment component, because nine times out of 10, that is why these universal life insurance policies are being sold to clients. It's not for coverage today and it's not for estate planning. It's for, hey, you need to retire one day. Maybe you should get some investments started. Universal life insurance is an investment, quote unquote. And by the way, it's not. I'm just saying what they say. And by the way, Great Way Financial actually has in their sales training that they should not call it insurance, but call it an investment opportunity and try and deceive the public into thinking that it's an investment when it's not. So with that being said, let's just talk about investing in life insurance here for a bit and what are my opinions on it. Now, keep in mind, I've been in the industry for almost 10 years now and I've sold a lot of big permanent life insurance policies. I've sold policies as large as $200,000 a year. So I am not against buying permanent life insurance as some type of quote unquote wealth building strategy or quote unquote investment. I don't like calling it investment because it's not really an investment, but some way to build your wealth. Now, the general premise of using life insurance as a quote unquote investment is essentially you'll have two components. And let's talk about specifically about universal life, because that's what we're going to be talking about in this video. Now, with universal life insurance, we have the cost of insurance and then we have this investment component. And these are unbundled. Like I mentioned, you can fluctuate them up and down. So the idea is that you would have this policy and you'd be putting money into it. Maybe $10 a month goes into the, the cost of insurance and maybe $90 goes into this investment. And the idea is that over time, you're going to build this investment account up. It's going to continuously grow and grow and grow. And eventually it's going to be higher than the cost of insurance. And then eventually over time, you're going to be able to borrow from this life insurance policy because you can borrow from that investment fund. You can pay an interest rate on it and borrow the money out of it. And you can use that to buy other investments, to maybe buy, to put some money into a business, to use it for retirement purposes or whatever you'd like. Here's some of the problems that I have specifically with invest in life insurance strategy as well as universal life insurance. First of all, just investing in life insurance is a poor investment decision if you're not already a high income earner here in Canada. There's already so many other traditional investment strategies that are very tax efficient or tax free, such as a tax free savings account. If you haven't already taken advantage of a tax free savings account or you haven't already taken advantage of your RRSP, this is not even something that you should consider. It shouldn't even be on your radar. Those are such tried and true strategies that don't have any strings attached to it. You can put money in. If you don't have money the next year, there's no problem. You don't have to put it in. Your policy doesn't collapse. You don't have to pay an interest rate to take your money out. There's not all these inefficiencies built into these strategies that, you know, lower the overall value of it, which they have with permanent life insurance and universal life insurance in general. So I would say this, if you're looking at this type of strategy and you're not a high income earner and you are, you, know, you have RSP room and you have TFS room, I would say absolutely not stay away from this type of strategy. Now, let's specifically talk about using universal life insurance to try and satisfy this quote unquote invest in life insurance strategy. This is where it gets even more complicated. I made a Facebook post the other day in multiple different life insurance groups. I put one on LinkedIn. I put one on Facebook as well. And I wanted to ask the community of, of competent insurance brokers where they would actually use universal life insurance in lieu of whole life insurance, because every single big permanent life insurance policy that I've personally sold in my career has been in whole life insurance because of what I, what I found, pardon me, was there's so many variables when it comes to this strategy. There's so many unknowns that the one one thing that I wanted to give to my clients was at least one known. We had whole life insurance, which is a very guaranteed and relatively safe type of product that we know exactly what's going to happen to it within certain degrees. So the strategy overall had so many different variables, but the product, we knew what it was going to do. Whereas universal life insurance, on the other hand, there's so many different variables and things that can go wrong with it. So when you have a strategy with so many variables and so many things that go wrong, and then you insert a product into that strategy that also has so many variables and so many things that can go wrong, I found that it just added so much confusion, so much uncertainty to this strategy that clients are like, this is too much. 
I don't want to do it. And I found that most other advisors in the Facebook groups and the LinkedIn pages that I went on had the same opinion. It's not effectively used as this type of invest in life insurance strategy. And so most of the time, whole life insurance is used and not universal life insurance. So you're probably wondering, is there any time when you should ever use universal life insurance or is it just always whole life insurance or term life insurance? And the answer to that is no, there are some specific cases where universal life insurance may be a better option. And it's not in that invest in life insurance option, but it is in some other area. So the first one that it actually could be a very good option for is if you have a contract with some type of specified amount. So what I mean by that is let's say you had some type of legal document that said upon death, we need exactly $723,000.53 or something like that. Okay. Well, the way that whole life insurance works in most cases, it's going to be a little bit more expensive as well. You're going to have this cash surrender value and you're going to be paying an extra premium to get all these things. And usually depending on how you structure whole life insurance, the face amount is also going to grow over time, which you think, Hey, that's a really good idea. That sounds great. But in this specific case, if you just had a contract where they said, I only need 723,000, that's it. I want to get the cheapest option. I have to get this coverage until I die. So I can't get a term policy. However, I don't want any added bells and whistles. I don't need cash value. I'm never going to borrow from this type of policy. I don't need the face amount to grow. I just need this exact dollar amount. That's where universal life insurance actually could be a great option. You could put it in place. You could fund it in a specific way where it was, you know, exactly funded within a certain amount of years. And you could let that grow to pay for the cost of insurance. You'd have really no fund value because you'd be paying for the cost of insurance, but it would be a permanent type of life insurance. It would last until the end and it would be the most inexpensive option for that scenario. Now, another type of option that you might want to use universal life insurance, you might want to consider universal life insurance for is if you wanted to buy a small amount now of life insurance and possibly put more money into it in the future. And universal life insurance really gives you that option to do it. So maybe, you know, you're in your 40s, business is doing well, and you intend to sell it, I don't know, let's say in five to 10 years. So you say, I don't really have the money now. However, I'm relatively young and healthy. Can we get something started now? And in five years from now, dump more money into it for some type of strategy or some type of permanent life insurance need. Universal life insurance could be a good way to utilize that or way to facilitate that, pardon me, because of its flexibility. Whole life insurance with those guarantees comes a lot more rigidity. Universal life insurance with none of the guarantees comes a lot more of that flexibility. So you can put some in now, you can put some in later, and it gives you a little bit more fluid options to, you know, change it as you need going forward. Now, the third case that you might want to consider universal life insurance, and this is a little bit more complicated, but I did want to put a few different options or a few different scenarios that it could be used effectively over a whole life insurance. This is in a corporate scenario. So if you're a business owner, and let's just hypothetically say you have a pure need for a state transfer. So what I mean by that is you have money in your corporation and you just, you have no desire to leverage. You don't want to borrow from it. You don't want to leverage from it. You just say, I have a business. I have a lot of money in it. When I die, I want that money to go to my family. I want to be as tax efficient as possible. I don't care about borrowing. I don't care about leverage. I don't care about cash value. Then structuring a universal life insurance policy in a way that essentially eats down any of the value, quote unquote, the fund value, and it essentially just has a pure life insurance component upon death is going to be the most tax efficient way for you to get that money out of the corporation and into the hands of your family as possible, especially over a whole life. Now, there are some added complexities to go with that. But if you had a pure need for just I have money in my corporation, I want it to go to my family, I don't care about leverage, I don't care about fund value, I'm never going to use it other than just give it to my family, this could be a good option. And the fourth option where universal life insurance could be a better option over whole life insurance is if you just were a very savvy investor that wanted all that added complexity and you wanted to have a lot more flexibility within your permanent life insurance policy. Now, Universal life insurance, as you're probably starting to you know, understand, is a very complicated product. And nine times out of 10, in fact, maybe 95% of the time, nine times out of 10 isn't even enough, the advisor that originally sold this policy to you is gonna be long gone out of the industry. The typical time frame for an advisor in the industry is like three to five years. I think 90% of them quit within three to five years. So there's a good chance if you buy this policy from someone, especially if they've been in the industry for under five years, they won't be with you in the end. So you need 
to be a very competent advisor who or, or not advisor, pardon me, but client who understands how this policy works, how you can leverage it, how the investment component works, how the actual cost of insurance works, how you can fluctuate those over time. But if you are that individual and you're looking for that type of policy, universal life insurance could be a better option for you over whole life insurance. So with that being said, in summary, you can see here that it's probably not the right fit for the majority of people. It's a very complicated product with a lot of things that can go wrong. Advisors don't really understand how it works. You fit into one of those four different scenarios. It could be a good option for you, but you can see here that it's probably not the best option for the majority of people looking at any type of permanent life insurance plan. However, I did want to put some things there because listen, only the Sith deal in absolutes. If someone says there's a one size fits all answer for everyone, they're out to lunch and they don't know what they're talking about. So there are some scenarios where universal life insurance can work more effectively over whole life insurance. It's just few and far between. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. If you guys have any questions or comments, just drop them below. And if you guys are enjoying this content, all I ask is give it a thumbs up and I'll see you guys in the next one.